if anybody didn't know, this is Shark Trader, one of our most important and most active members in the server. So you managed to triple your salary. Uh, how did it feel? Just because I've never experienced that much amount of money at the same time, at the short amount of time. That's the reason why I, I thought I was gonna, I, w I thought I was gonna like quit my job and you know, like be well, start being more cautious with the market because as soon as I start traveling around the world, that's when I become more reckless with my trades. I was what? By jumping in a trade with like regular standard lots and I even doing my analysis and thinking I was just pretty much like saying, okay, that's going to go up. I didn't do my, my due diligence if it's good with my technical analysis. And yeah, the next morning I would wake up and I'll be in the red. So that's how I end up losing a lot of money, like within six months after that. In six months after that. And then what happened? Yeah. And I got, I guess you could say beef with other like groups. Cause uh, we kind of want to start like some, this one guy, he wanted to do a hedge fund group and I guess he wanted some funds from me and we kind of had the dispute about it. So I was starting to start a hedge fund with some guy that I barely knew just, just from a discord group too, as well. And I don't know, it was pretty reckless of me doing all that. Cause I guess I've never experienced that much money. I didn't know how to handle it. If you like can... at the same time I was learning, go ahead. If you can just come back and uh, I apologize to everybody if you already heard this, but I didn't mm -hmm. because I had problem with my Wi-Fi. How did you, what was the actual, I would say, strategy behind trading to manage to triple your salary? What, what did you actually do? I held on a lot of weed stocks and I did a lot of earnings play with uh, FANG stocks because uh, the group that I was in, we were all strictly stocks. So that's how I got into it. I tried to double with uh, Forex, but I just couldn't. And then soon, that's when I met two guys that did gold and I kept in touch with them. And that's how I got more into gold, like later on. I think stocks is what kind of converted me to, to uh, gold because of the, I guess the people that I was associating myself with that time. So it's more about the people you were associating with, not the asset you chose by yourself. Yeah, I guess they were more reckless with their trades as well. And I think I realized I shouldn't be hanging out with those kind of people if they're making those, I guess, high risk trades. When I noticed the people trading gold, they were, they had a different strategy on how they trade. And uh, how would you describe that reckless trading? What was reckless behind it? You could say they were risking, they were willing to risk 75% of their account and willing to be on a drawdown and keep holding it. You could say they were like a Wall Street bets kind of guys. Oh, okay. So is it, it, it was a high risk, but it, was there any uh, management? Did, you, did they know how much they were risking or it was just reckless that they even they didn't even know how much they're risking? Yeah, you could say they were doing a lot of YOLO plays <laughs> with the plays that we did. So. Okay, okay. What would you take out? And, okay, sorry, sorry. Keep going. Oh yeah, and I guess that's when my, my first, my mentor, the one I told you about, the lady that first got me into trading, she kind of like hit me up and asked me how I was uh, trading and everything. And she realized I was, you know, doing like some really high risk trades with these stocks that I barely knew too. So okay, that's when she kind of told me to like kind of doing what I'm doing. Okay, could you connect this? I, I'm trying to get into your mindset at the time. So you're making those high risk mm -hmm. trades with those kind of people. Did you know that they were yeah. high risk and reckless trades? Or was she the one that told you, you need to get out of this? Yeah, I knew they were high risk, but I had that mindset of get rich quick scheme, you know, how people are in trading, like they just want to get the money in and out. That's how my mindset was like, I could make a, what, $2,000 in two hours and I'll be out. But no, I kind of held it longer. I, I, I'll head probably for like a week or two. So, okay. So you're not in that get rich, get quick mindset. No, but I was looking more for a company that was ready to like pretty much blow up like the weed stocks, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, could you go more about that? Elaborate. Yeah, the weed stocks was fairly new around around that time when I got in, and the people I was hanging out with, they told me they have connection with the person who owns that company, and were telling me their stock is gonna skyrocket. So it did, but it ended up crashing later on. I guess because uh, we were positive with the federal regulation that they were working that legalizing marijuana at a federal level, but that's still in the works at the moment which never happened too, so. Okay. Do you have, how many, could you maybe note uh, from this kind of journey, mm -hmm. could, you, could, you, could you note a couple of learnings or do you have maybe like the one most important one? The, my most important one is probably, I guess, really small. 
after what happened, how much money I lost and everything. Yeah, I, I trade probably a micro lot with a with a five thousand dollar trading account. So. Okay. And I, I I don't go by profits. I go by percentage on my portfolio. So on my portfolio, I try to aim for ten to fifteen percent on, on gains for the month. I don't aim for let me make a thousand dollars. Let me for me it's let me make ten percent of increase on my portfolio. So I'm thinking not like Wall Street, but more like the lady who taught me how to trade. I kind of want to trade like her. Like she trades pretty low risk. And I guess she's my role model on trading compared to the guys that was with before that. Okay. So what, what does your risk management looks like now? Uh, a lot better. Like I said, I try to risk like 10% of my account and that's it. And I'll be happy with whatever small gains I get. Okay. And okay. I avoid like keep going. I'm more of a technical trader as well, so I avoid the news and sit on the sideline most of the time. Technical trader. What uh, what does that include? How would you describe it? price action? Yeah, uh, look looking for patterns in the market. So for me, I focus more on like breakouts. You would say. Okay. And and pretty much certain like I look for the higher time frame. So on the daily, monthly, or even weekly, I look for like the the resistance and support levels to see if it's going to either break or turn back around. Could you show us that? Could you share, give us like, I would say, I think that uh, one of the most important things that people want to in these sessions and what I've seen from the past speakers is to kind of give us the process or I would say even the guidelines on how you're doing that, how you're handling your risk management, how you're analyzing price action. So I think that would be really valuable. Okay, let me share my screen. For anybody that's new here, just okay. tap on a shark's screen to see it better, to see it full screen. Okay, so I trade mostly gold. For me, I try to look for the bigger time frames to start off with. And I see where, I guess, the top of the level is and the bottom. So we zoom in on the daily. We can see it's ranging in between here. Now we're going to zoom in a little bit closer. Four hours. Does my audio sound fine? Yeah, sounds great. Okay. We had a little breakout this morning with the news. So that's a huge impulse of this candle right here on the hourly. We broke out this range right here. Let me pull the horizontal line. I'm still getting accustomed with um, trade lockers uh, charts because I have all my markups on uh, trading view. So I do apologize. I don't have my markups right now. Don't worry. If you have time, you can you can do it right now. Okay. Wait, go on my trading view? No, I meant if you can, if you if you want, you can uh, mark it up here on trade locker. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let me move this out the way. So it was ranging right here and it finally cracked above. I'm waiting for me. Normally I wait to see how it's gonna set up over here. I look left, like previous resistance, zoom out, closest one. So I'm waiting probably for a pullback over here. The next higher is 2049, which was twice over here. And for me, when I mark up my charts, I try to see if if a level has been tested twice so this this is once twice right here and right here this could be another level right here as it's been tested multiple times and it ranged between this level right here between the 2057 2053 uh, that's definitely a nice breakout to the downside so let's go back to where it's currently at right now it said it's testing the 2048 range and if you zoom out like i said it's been tested twice uh, so i'm definitely waiting for a pullback to the 2042 level as this was the highest at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really go that far out unless I'm swing trading it, but I haven't swing traded in years, you could say. So right now I'm do more of a scalper or day trade. Any questions? Just one for now. What time frames are you making up from tra from uh right now I'm looking at the one one hour. Are you only using the one hour or which other time frames are you oh, using? No, when I jump in a trade, I start zooming into the 15 minute or even the five minute to look for like a reversal like this per se and see how the volume of the candle is looking. So if you could say this has a lot more bearish pressure, then that's when I'll definitely be looking for a short. If it looks, if the weights are looking more bullish, then of course I'm going to be looking for a breakout to the 2048 level and a breakout to the 2053. So, so the smaller time frames, I look for the volume of the candle. The hourly, I just look for the levels of the support and resistance. Does that kind of make sense? Uh, we'll see if the person replies uh, if it's correct, but it makes sense to me. I I happen to could you could you maybe comment on this big big rise? What happened here is it maybe connected to some something that we learned recently, some news or 
Yeah, this this was definitely news this morning because uh, we if you guys follow us at the metals floor, we were talking about there were some heavy news at eight thirty, and this kind of set it off right here. Uh, it's been a while since we had that much volume. Like if you zoom all the way back, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah, middle middle February, and I actually forgot what news we had at that day. But, but yeah, for me, I just been scalping this range right here for the past couple of days, and this breakout, I literally had my. I was sitting on my hands on the breakout of this, so no FOMO or anything. So set up. that's what I wanted to ask you. You said you're more of a technical trader, so you're not really, I wouldn't say following or trading trading news, but this this amount of price action it must it must impact you. I mean, you, so you're you're how you how is it that you're not trading news? What what exactly are you not not doing? Let's say so. Like bring back how my story was we traded news like the little stock group i was in we were trading earnings nfp calls with the stocks that i was trading in like all the fang stocks it would definitely be affected by like the nfp or their earnings play so that's what i was chasing i was chasing more of the news and i think that's the reason why i got scared of trading news now that i just stick to technical analysis on the safe side okay that's fair enough and makes sense guys if you have any more questions feel free to drop them people i noticed one comment here uh, before says that you're maybe less of a traditional trader yeah, yeah i would definitely say i'm more traditional trader because uh, i don't have social media i've been out for quite some time now and when i joined the server i realized a lot of guys were doing funded accounts or learning what i see i've never heard of this at all and the guys that i know that are like successful at doing this they don't even know any of that kind of stuff at all so okay yeah i would say i'm definitely more this cool Th there's another question uh, you don't uh, really use indicators mm -hmm. right i use a 200 moving average but that's just to see where the trend is going. Is it on a bullish trend or a downtrend? If it's below the 200, then yeah, look for shorting opportunities. Okay, okay. Easy man, I believe we answered the question. Coach, one of the speakers here at the auditorium wants to know, uh, what do you normally trade and do you have a trading window? I mean, you said you mostly trade gold. Yeah, uh, my trading window is normally between London and New York. And I try to be out by 9.30 because of uh, news and I work around this time too. So I try to be off. And uh, for me, I have a strict rule. I don't do trades while I'm working, especially when it gets too busy. So okay. I would feel a lot better if uh, there was no trade running while I'm at work. Okay. Do you have maybe a specific uh, number of trades you make per day or let's say a magic number? Two or three. That's it. That's it. Why? Three max. I guess just to keep it at a minimum. Like I said, I'm trying. To be, I'm more cautious of, I guess, my trading experience. So. Okay. Okay, makes sense. That that comes with. The... Being reckless for yeah, it's definitely a learning lesson. Okay. Uh, what time frame do you read the hundred MA? Say it again. Uh, there's a there's a last question is what time frame do you read the two hundred MA? More in the daily, just to see where the trend is going. So not familiar with the tools over here. How, can you put indicators on here? Yes, you can. You can do whatever. It's just like trading view. Okay. I feel like I'm offending you because I don't really know how to use no. um, trade lockers. I understand that. Uh, I, I understand that most of the people still use trading view for technical analysis, and that's fine. Yeah. So we're not still above the trend. Yeah. So that's what I look for. I pretty much look to see if it's above the line or below the line. For like, like I said, if it's below the line, look for short opportunities above. Then yeah, I'll look for a buying opportunity okay what what would what would you say is your do you have maybe like a daily goal when it comes to day trading or yeah it's the same goal that i had since the beginning uh as long as you're in the green you're good i don't really like i said i don't chase the the profits i chase the percentage so as long as i'm 10 10 or 15 percent up then that's a win for me because that sounds realistic to you yeah okay like, like the guys mentioned earlier it's a i'm a more of a traditional so i focus more on the percentage than the profits because i already have a full-time job i already have like some side gigs too so i have a good amount of income coming in but this i wouldn't mind doing it full-time so i'm like i guess slowly trying to build up to it okay okay that's fine i mean or i guess till i'm more consistent with it uh, the coach says easier on the mindset to look at the percent instead of the dollars yeah, Polly. Polly added that it makes you makes trading less emotional. Uh, does it does it make sense to you? Yeah, definitely. Because uh, when I was doing stocks before, yeah, I was literally looking at my 
charge like 24 7 keep keeping tabs of where the price is at so basically tripling your salary when when you when you did it before you mm -hmm. you got involved a lot emotionally to in trading which is not a really good yeah thing. definitely and definitely uh, learned from a lot of people like different traders I uh, hang out with, like I said, stock traders, option traders, uh, day traders that do commodities. So I definitely learned a lot from them. Okay. I, I skipped one question. Sorry. There's a question. How do you spot a uh, fake out when you're doing your technical? So I would definitely zoom in for like on the 15th if I'm looking for a spot on the fake out. So you could say zoom back out. You guys don't have the back tech button, do you? Uh, not right now. Button? Not right now, but coming up really, really soon. Okay. So let's try to look for fake out. So this one would be definitely a good pick out if you zoom out on the hourly. This is zoomed in on the on the 15. And for me, I guess, like I said, I zoom in and look at the candle on the wicks to see if it is going to be a sell. And if, But if the wicks like that is showing a lot of bullish pressure, then that's when I'm going to be like iffy about it of jumping in. But normally when it comes to breaking out to like, let's say this right here, just say I see this crack below and I'm thinking it's a sell. I'm going to wait for it for a retest or maybe a few more candles before actually jumping in for a sell. I wait two or three candles for a better uh, confirmation of a downside. So like to say, if we back up to these two candles right here, it definitely shows a selling opportunity, but I, I'm probably going to have a tight stop loss and it'll stop me out probably right above here before it goes back to the uptrend. So of course, this is a fake out right here. And I probably wouldn't have spotted that and probably got it wrong because of the two candles right here. Because for me, I would have believed that I would have kept going down just because of the pressure on the wicks right here. But if I noticed this was showing pressure, then yeah, I would probably like got out as soon as possible. Okay. Another question I skipped. Sorry, guys. Uh, from BYs. What lot size do you usually use? Uh, 0 0.05 to uh, 0.10. And I'm trading off a $5,000 account. So like I said, I trade my lot size are pretty small right now until I'm more consistent with it. Before, like I said, I was trading standard lots when I first started. And that's definitely a learning lesson for me. Is there like a specific uh, one mm -hmm. learning that you would like everybody here in the audience to remember after this? Uh, this was definitely mentioned before from the other uh, speakers. Trade your demo like it's your live account. So that's how I view it too like this demo account i try to baby it too because i started off with a thousand on this one as a demo and now i kind of grew it i'm a little bit more reckless on the demo because i like to back test or test out my theories or my strategies but i don't really have an emotion to it that's the reason why i try to trade like it's my real live account so though uh, try to do try to bring your reality as close as possible to you yeah and i guess another lesson is uh, stay away from high risk traders because they could probably convince you to pull out some money off your retirement account so okay okay i think that uh, we're pretty much done with the chart and the technical analysis questions we can turn on turn off and turn on the camera again there's a there's another question from shockwave which uh, which i forgot mm -hmm. also is did you only learn from people around you or did you learn from many other mediums like uh, youtube books how did you yeah yeah, I learned from YouTube and I joined another group on Discord too as well. There were another uh, day trading for stocks, but I realized that group, they do what's called the HG Cloud mm -hmm. Indicator. And that was a lot confusing for me. So I just stick to price action. Okay. So, but yeah, definitely a lot more physical because I guess I went to like uh, meetups for in-person groups okay okay i understand so mostly from people around you and but yeah. I, I can if i can notice something about you, you mostly learned by yourself yeah i guess because um, there's that one quote that's ingrained in my head is uh, who you surround yourself with is what you'll become so i tried to surround myself with like professional traders like i try to go to those meetups with like guys who do it full time like you could literally just go on like google and find a group that does day trading Okay. Yeah. So you you go to also uh, in person meet meetups if I if I understood you correctly. Yeah, yes, I do. When was the last time you went? Probably last year. After I blew my account, like I just kept everything to myself. Like that's the reason why I cut off my social media because I didn't want to talk to anybody. 
Okay, okay, I I, I can understand that. Coach had a different uh, reason yeah. why, but uh, that's for him. <laughs> okay, man. Uh, I think that uh, this is fairly enough for the first session. I think a lot of people here heard some something interesting. Guys, let me know if you want to see Shark again. I apologize for the disruptions at the, at the beginning. It was my fault, but you know I, I'm not the person in question here. So Shark is. So uh, don't let's forget about that. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you, Angelo, for joining in. Uh, it was great short maybe not even so short session but i think uh, we covered a lot and hopefully we'll see you soon man yeah thanks for having me how did you enjoy it what, when, when was the last time you spoke uh, on some kind of a stream in front of a lot of people i do gaming streams to another server so i'm used to it but it's a smaller audience like 10 people okay. and we're just they're like good friends of mine <laughs> okay that's compared good. to speaking to 40 strangers yeah yeah <laughs> I, I can I can relate. <laughs> I can under, I relate. You understand, you man. Okay, yeah. guys, thank you for joining in. Uh, tomorrow we have Alex, and tomorrow I will announce the schedule for next week. There'll be more traders, more people that have been reaching out, uh, some funded traders, a lot of interesting people. So have a good day and talk to. You. See you later. See you.